So talking about Polyjet, so there's four main areas where you want to maintenance items that you want to keep an eye on. So that's your, your overall machine cleaning, your material storage, wizards, as well as head cleaning. So uh, head cleaning is probably the most important aspect of your Polyjet machine. Uh, it's important to do this before and after every print. If it's not cleaned immediately after, resin can sit on the tops of those heads and can clog them up. So what you want to make sure that you do is after the print, you're available or around the machine to clean the heads off with a lint-free cloth and some isopropyl alcohol, wiping those heads just to remove that excess resin. When you're wiping the heads, you want to make sure that you're wiping in one direction. Uh, you don't want to be rubbing back and forth because you don't want to take that resin that you just wiped off and just sort of push it back onto the head or push it deeper into the head. So wiping in one direction, changing the area that you're wiping with the cloth, you know, folding it over just to make sure that you're not putting the resin back onto the head because there's not a lot of pressure or anything that's necessary. You're just sort of just grazing the, the bottom of the head. But when you're doing this head cleaner, it's also a good practice to clean the roller, which is on either the left, right, or both. And you'll be able just to kind of wipe any resin that catches on that, uh, as well as the purge area, typically on the, on the left-hand side of the machine. It'll open up and allow you to, uh, to wipe into it. But as you can see, you know, a folded over lint-free cloth with some isopropyl and, and very minimal pressure, just, you know, wiping right across, clean any resin off. Uh, so the head cleaner is just one of the many wizards that are available in the, on the Polyjet machine. So a lot of the maintenance items that you can do are uh, bundled into these wizards. So if you have a head cleaning or a shutdown or something like that, you'll just go to your embedded machine. So that's the machine that's the computer that's built into your machine. It'll sort of have a menu that looks somewhat like the one on the left. Um, and you'll want to travel down to the wizards menu and there'll be a bunch of head calibrations, head optimizations, that ensure that you're dispensing the right amount of resin. So if you're running into issues with maybe uh, material isn't being weighed correctly in the material base and stuff like that, there's a wizard for that. And they're very step-by-step, -step, so they'll help you guide you along the way um, of doing it. Um, so talking about Polyjet material storage, uh, same rules apply. You do want to keep it in a, in a cool, dry place, typically away from direct sunlight as well, because it is a UV curable resin. So you, on the chance that there's a little bit of resin maybe on an, on an end port or something like that, you don't want it to cure. Polyjet material does have a, a hard shelf life. So it's a hard 12 to 18 months, depending on material. After that point, the machine will not take any expired resin it'll give you a warning saying that the material's expired and it won't let you print with it. So you do want to make sure that you do use that resin before it expires. Oh, just one more note about material storage. A lot of these canisters are either blow molded or uh, blow mold with a bag inside of it. Um, so you do want to be careful handling them because if you do drop them, uh, the, the blow molding case could crack and you could have anywhere between, you know, 500 grams to like four kilograms of resin all over your shop floor. So you do want to just be you know, a little bit more careful handling them than uh, you know, a spool of FDM material. So then overall machine cleaning, so not just talking about the head here now, so keeping that build area clean is key. So when Polyjet parts print, it, they typically lay down a, a couple layers of model material, then start with support material. So as you take parts off the tray, you'll notice that there's almost like a, a little film of model material that's sort of left on the tray. So you'll want to get on there with a razor blade or a scraper that's kind of shown in this picture and, and try to scrape that excess material up because you don't want to have any sort of excess material when you're starting your next print. When you wipe it down with a cleaner, we typically use uh, Simple Green, pretty good all around cleaner for cleaning that base off without leaving any kind of a film or residue. Uh, so that'll just make sure that your you know, build tray is as clean as possible. These machines do create waste resin. So that waste resin will find its way in the form of a bag in a box for most machines uh, that hold a couple of kilograms of resin, depending on machine. So that is uncured resin that's just in a bag. So you do want to make sure that that is handled like any other uh, hazardous waste. It's not something that can be dumped down the drain or anything like that. It's also not something that you should open up and let cure and then throw out. It is a, a large amount of resin, so it is something that you want to handle like any other hazmat material.